everyone, my name is Heather. I'll be your sobering guide to day to the Kurama Wildlife Preserve. For everyone's safety, remain fully seated at all times with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the chart. If you look above you, you'll see an animal spotting guide. We may not see all the animals, but we usually have some pretty good luck. Make sure to have those cameras ready to go and hang on to any loose items that might fall off the truck. I cannot stop the truck to pick anything up. Now for the safety of the animals, please do not reach out, call out, or make any kind of loud noises to them. Also, there is no eating throughout the entire safari. Alright friends, we're going to be heading into the Little Viteri Forest. And this is where you'll find some of the more shy and reclusive animals. swim they'll just walk or run along the bottom and a group of hippos are called a bloat they are nocturnal so at night they'll come out to the banks to graze grass and they can head back into the water by morning they are well suited for life in the water with their ears eyes and nostrils located at the top of their head that way they can still be in the water but hear and see what's going on above the water. Down to your left side, you'll see the Nile crocodiles. And 
diet mainly consists of fish, but they'll eat anything unfortunate enough to cross its path. conserve water, it can remain leafless for up to nine months out of the year. The savanna is home to animals like elephants who can bulldoze trees. You'll find giraffes with their height. They're able to prune the leaves out of tall trees. And you can find antelope who will eat the grass. Over to your right side, you'll see the Ancoli cattle. They're often called Watusi after the people who first domesticated them. Their horns grow about three to four feet long. The weight of their horns is supported by a muscle in their head and their duaf or extra skin fold in their neck. Over to your left side are the African wild dogs, also called African painted dogs. They're very social animals and can live in packs up to 15 adults. Each one has a unique patchwork coat and they're able to recognize each other even from a distance. Over to the far left side are the sable antelope. They are the emblem here at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. And their horns are deterred from lions wanting to jump up onto their backs. On your right and left side, you'll see the wildebeests. They are often called new because the vocalizations they make sound like new, new. Also on your right and left side are some termite mounds. They're made out of soil, saliva, and dung. Elephants can use them as a scratching post. And if they get worn down, antelope will use them as a lookout post for predators. On the right and left side, you'll see the eland. They are the largest antelope. A male can stand about six feet tall to shoulder. They're capable of leaping up to eight feet vertically on the ground from a standing position. Over to your right side, you'll see the Hartman's Mountain Zebra. They are the only zebra species to have a dewlap. It's an extra skin fold in their neck, which will help to keep them cool during the warmer temperatures. A group of zebra are called a dazzle. Each zebra will have their own unique pattern, just like every human has their own unique fingerprint. At nighttime, the wildebeest will sleep in rows on the ground. This will help to offer protection, but also quick escape in an emergency. And they can migrate over hundreds of miles during the year. Coming up to your right side, you'll see the giraffes, and they're capable of reaching heights up to 20 feet tall. Now they have an 18 inch long prehensile tongue. Their tongue is a dark purple color, which will help prevent it from getting sunburned. A newborn giraffe on average is about six feet tall and they're capable of standing and walking within the first hour of 
being born. This will help them to evade their predators. Just like the zebra, each giraffe will have their own unique pattern as well. Over to your right side, you'll see the African elephant. An adult elephant can consume about 300 pounds of food a day anywhere from roots or leaves to small trees. An elephant's trunk contains about 100,000 muscles. They'll use their trunk to eat and drink. They can also use it to throw mud up onto their backs. The mud will act as a natural sunblock, which will help to protect their skin from the sun. Coming up will be the red clay pits. And over to the right side, you'll be able to see elephant tusk marks in the clay. That's because the elephants will consume the clay in order to supplement their diet with mineral. Elephants are found in a matriarchal society where the females will spend the majority of their time together with their young. When the males reach their early teens, they will leave the herd and either go off on their own or they can join a loose all male group. More elephants over to your left side. One human elephant conflict is the mining of a metallic ore called coltan. It's used in making small electronics and cell phones. So one way you can help out the elephants is to recycle any of your old cell phones. Let's see if we get another view of the elephants to the left side.
towards the top left of the hill, right at the base of the tree. Underwater. 
don't like to say goodbye. It's much too sad and much too final. So we say quaharini, which means to go well.